Good morning. Thank you for inviting me. I have uh, submitted my uh, presentation to the organizers. Uh, I'm no expert on trade policies, but as a concerned citizen, I would like to pose some questions for the decision makers and the policy takers. First is uh, the question, have we evaluated the existing trade agreements and explored how to strengthen them? Have we gone through all the pros and cons and looked into whatever beneficial clauses that we have not tapped? Have we addressed all the shortcomings of the existing agreements without venturing into new arenas where we don't know the outcome? My next question is, how far do technical experts and the general public have a say before any decisions are taken, especially with regard to national policy? Uh, I'm um, taking the subject of ITCA and SIPA uh, because various objections have uh, been put forward to the government by uh, professional organizations as well as the general public, uh, primarily of which is the concerns of the demographic change if Indians are allowed to work, live, and uh, enter Sri Lanka freely without any monitoring or control systems. As a result, I feel that this is going to create major social unrest in the future and it is unhealthy for any government to take up, especially the public at large. Um, I would also like to stress that uh, since we do not have funds for any international arbitration cases with regard to trade, are we in a position or do we have internal structures which are strong enough to address trade issues? If we do not have internal structures that are strong and that can take in the interest of the country, we should not enter into any agreement without having those structures in place first. Uh, my recommendations um, for the, the panel is that why do we want to venture into new agreements when we already have existing ones? When we have not explored those existing ones and seen ways of strengthening them, there are enough of provisions already in, clause, in uh, agreements like APTA and SAFTA. Why are we entering into new agreements without exploring those avenues first? Uh, then, uh, since Sri Lanka is a very small country, and we are dealing with FTAs with very large countries. Why do, do, why do we not uh, stick to safer turf by um, first uh, going to regional trade agreements instead of bilateral agreements? Uh, uh, the most important um, suggestion or recommendation I like to make is that a government is voted into power only for a term. No government should have any right to be compromising the national assets or strategic areas of a country. That should be a very clear policy uh, that is uh, relevant to any political party that comes into power. No political mileage should be gained by entering into trade agreements that compromise the country's strategic assets and um, strategic areas. Secondly, uh, Lastly, I would like to make that, uh, uh, stress that, have we learned from our mistakes? Why do we always want to walk into new mistakes? Uh, with regard to the trade agreements with India, we must always keep in mind of historical past. We have uh, been forced virtually under duress to sign the indo Lanka agreement, and these are affecting us politically to date. Therefore, any agreement, we must be very careful that we have all the structures in place to protect us, the interest of the people. Uh, as regards the trade, I must say that we are walking be backwards because uh, in the past, our kings manufactured and supplied ships to the emperors uh, in all corners of the world. Today, what are we manufacturing? 
it is a very sad situation that we have not got our act together and it is time that we did. We have to certainly look globally, but we must always act locally. And with that, I'd like to end my presentation. Thank you. I have made uh, my paper. Yes, I've submitted that. Everything is there. I said, look globally, act locally. <laughs> okay, thank you very much.